Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Brittany and I enjoy the simple things in life like exploring the tools and systems marketed to photographers and creative small business owners. I find the tech, do some investigating, occasionally break things, always by accident, and report back with my thoughts. If that sounds like your kind of thing, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel. Today, I am diving into a new aftershoot tool, AI retouching. They have been teasing this AI retouching feature since last fall. So when I finally got the early access email, I was stoked and had to try it right away. If you're unfamiliar, Aftershoot is an AI powered platform designed to help photographers speed up their workflow. It handles calling, editing, and now retouching all in one application. It aims to take the repetitive parts of your job and automate them so that you can focus on the creative stuff. If you're interested in seeing the aftershoot culling and editing in use, I have a lot of videos on my channel highlighting them. Honestly, given the amount of times I've looked at aftershoot, I'm feeling like I should probably propose soon, or at least we should get a dog together. I'm keeping things pretty casual for this video, but I did want to organize it a little so that the timestamps in the description make sense. What we'll be covering is getting set up for retouching, checking out the tool, and my early impressions. That should give us a pretty good first look at the tool and how it's functioning during these early access days. Before we fully jump into it, just a quick heads up. Because this is early access, there are definitely some quirks here and there. If you've ever played a video game in early access, you know it's not always a smooth ride, and it's not necessarily a reflection of the final product. I'll point out anything I run into, but I'm also going to keep in mind that this is still a work in progress. And one last thing, then we'll get to it, I promise. Everyone's workflow and preferences are a little different, and I may do something in a way that you don't like. It's totally fine for you to feel that. I just ask that if you want to express those feelings that you stay respectful and for us to both stay open-minded to each other's perspectives. All right, with that all out of the way, let's start getting the system set up so that we can start using the retouching tool. To use Aftershoot's new AI retouching, we'll need to upload JPEGs to the retouch tab within a project. They don't have to come from a previous Aftershoot workflow or project. Any JPEGs you already have can be imported into the application and retouched. For this test, I decided to be a little extra and run a full set of images through the typical Aftershoot workflow. I gathered up 70 raw images from a headshot session my friend did of me and my dog a few years ago, shout out Marlena Photography, tossed them into the Aftershoot AI color, which narrowed that selection down to 30 images. I did some additional unselecting because, as I always say, AI is a goofball and needs to be checked. And yes, that does apply to all AI. From there, I had Aftershoot apply my AI preset, and I ran into a small hiccup here. I selected 23 images, but only 15 ended up in the edits export, so I had to rerun the editing to get the full set completed, which only took 28 seconds for this small amount of photos, so it wasn't a big deal to rerun. Still, I'm not sure why that happened, but we're not focusing on the AI editing today, so we'll keep it moving. After editing, I tried using Aftershoot's direct export to Lightroom feature, but it just did not want to work for me. So I ended up exporting the images to a folder and pulling them into Lightroom manually. Since my Aftershoot editing profile is based on a pretty tiny training set of 2,600 photos, the edits weren't 100% spot on. So I decided to apply some quick exposure and white balance fixes while in Lightroom. With Everything looking pretty good, we are ready to discuss retouching, which for this aftershoot tool, there are two ways to access it. One option is directly in Lightroom through the photos dropdown or right clicking on an image, then hovering over edit in and selecting edit in aftershoot. I gave that a shot and hit some sort of snag because I couldn't get it to work. I would select the option, the aftershoot application would open, and 
and that would be about it. The image wouldn't populate, a new project wouldn't be created, nothing. Hopefully they can get that issue fixed up soon. The other option is to export the images as JPEGs and manually upload them back into Aftershoot. This was the easiest way to get us where we wanted to go since the other method wasn't working. With the JPEG images now in Aftershoot, we can head over to the Retouch tab where the AI retouching models will require some updating. This update does only happen once, so this shouldn't be something that we need to wait on every time. I will say that I was initially getting network errors and failed download pop-ups when I was trying to access the retouching feature, leaving the tool totally unusable for me. However, much to Aftershoot's credit, their customer support team is awesome. They jumped on the issue as soon as I contacted them and passed my user logs to the devs. Based on how fast this issue was fixed, I'm guessing it might have been a wider spread issue. Whatever it was, once there was a patch, the retouching models were able to update and I was able to play around with some sliders. There are helpful tips that pop up at different points in the interface, which is super nice when you're new and don't really know where to click or what to try first. The AI retouching interface itself is pretty simple. There's a dropdown with several retouching presets ready to go, plus a set of sliders you can adjust for things like face, body, and skin. You can easily check your before and after with a toggle, and there's a history button that lets you pop open a list and roll back to any adjustment point you want. There's a little circular arrow icon next to the preset dropdown that acts like an undo button, but there's also the exact same icon next to each slider section, and that one resets just the sliders in that category. So even though the icons look identical, they do two different things. There is a tooltip that pops up when you hover over the slider reset button to help explain it, but not one when hovering over the preset undo button. Honestly, identical icons with different behaviors can still throw people off, even if they're paying attention. Personally, I'd rather they find a different undo button icon or just make them all function as reset buttons. We already have a history panel for undoing bigger moves and a quick reset is way more helpful when you accidentally go full Ross Geller with the teeth whitening sliders. Some features are still marked as coming soon, like clothing de-wrinkling and darkened hair, so it looks like there's more expansion planned down the line. It honestly makes me wonder what else they might have cook in that they haven't shown yet. So after spending some time poking around the retouching tool, a few things definitely stood out to me, some good and some that are still very much in progress. Interface wise, I actually like a lot of what's already there. The sliders are clear and the labels are simple yet descriptive enough of what changing that slider will do. There's no need for a bunch of slider tooltips or pop-ups. The sliders are also pretty effective at doing what they're supposed to do and keeping a natural look that doesn't appear overly edited, as long as you use the sliders appropriately, of course. I also really love that presets are loaded in right from the start. It makes it really easy to get a baseline retouch without having to start from scratch every single time. Also, if you're curious, the AI retouching currently only works on what it detects as human, which we can deduce pretty easily since the sliders are all based around face and body things. I did still try it out with some jewelry product shots just to confirm that, but the only element I could make work was the patch tool. And can I just say that did work really well. I pitted against Lightroom's clone stamp and the AI retouching tool in Aftershoot got me to a happy spot a tiny bit quicker and with fewer clicks. I also attempted to brighten some of my dog's features, but I guess the AI already understands that animals are flawless, so there's nothing to correct on them. There are a couple of things I was hoping to see that I could not find. First is a dedicated one-click reset button for quickly clearing all adjustments even presets. I spoke a little bit about this earlier, but I did initially think the icon that appears next to the preset dropdown was a full reset button. However, it is just an undo button for presets. Plus, if we apply a preset and then go and mess with some sliders, the preset gets changed back to none and the undo icon disappears. 
So from that point, if we want to reset things, we have to click each of the reset icons next to the slider categories. And just to reiterate what I spoke on earlier, the same icon type doing two different functions gets a big old no from me. The second wishlist item is the ability to stack multiple presets. Right now, it seems like you can use any one of these presets, but not multiples on the same image. I could create my own preset with face and hair cleanup, but what if occasionally I want to apply some skin and teeth brightening? Of course, I could create a second preset for skin and teeth for those moments when I do need to apply it, but I then can't stack it with my face and hair preset. Also, I do realize now how weird <laughs> these presets that I name sound. Sure, I could make a third preset to include all of those sliders, but couldn't I also just preset stack and not have all sorts of preset variations? Currently, there's not a ton of sliders to worry about, so I get if this doesn't seem like a big deal, which is why I'm calling it a wishlist item. Now, the biggest pain point for me so far is the lag. The system frequently falls behind when you move the sliders, freezing up for long stretches and sometimes just buffers for minutes at a time. I'm a bit of a gremlin when I see a slider, so sometimes I play too much with them just to see what happens. And every time I did this in the aftershoot retouching area, the program struggled to keep up. One time it lagged or buffered so badly that I wandered downstairs, got some lunch, and started working on the script for this video while I waited. Full speculation here, so take this with a grain of salt, but based on a conversation I had over the summer and the behavior that I'm seeing, I have a guess about where Aftershoot might be sourcing some of the backend tech for this retouching feature. If it's the place I think it is, I've had very similar laggy experiences with that system, which honestly kept me from doing a full review of it because it just annoyed me so much that I didn't want to use the program at all. But again, I don't know for sure if Aftershoot is integrating external tech or if they built the retouch function from scratch. So this is all just a bit of my opinion and alleged speculation that I've been going back and forth with myself about. Overall, Aftershoot's AI retouching tool is well on its way to being a very cool addition to the Aftershoot AI fleet. And I expect they'll keep gathering feedback and making improvements as they go. Right now though, the lag I have experienced is rough and it's not something I'm used to seeing from Aftershoot. I'm really hoping they can get that ironed out because my workflow at least can be really thrown off by the responsiveness of a tool and would keep me from using this feature long-term. So yeah, I want to see that tightened up. And that about does it for our first look at the Aftershoot AI retouching tool. Are you excited by this feature or are you a little hesitant about it? Let me know in the comments. Also, just to reiterate this, if you get access to the beta version, don't forget to temper your expectations as this is not the full release and I have no intel on when that full release will happen. When it does get fully launched, I'll hopefully be able to do a mini follow-up to talk more about it. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and what I took a look at today, I hope you'll consider liking, subscribing, and hitting that little bell to be alerted whenever I release a new video. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.